Welcome to the Rock Church Riverside, taking the Word of God to Riverside and around the world. Let's prepare our hearts now for another dynamic message from the Word of God. Amen. Welcome to the week after Easter. Amen. How many had a great Easter service? Amen. Oh, I tell you, it was so exciting. I want to thank everyone, not just the worship team. I'm talking about the ushers, the greeters, the, the worship team, the children's ministry, the youth ministry. Oh my goodness, everybody was, you know, every ace in their place, amen. Everyone was on their A, a, team, on their a game, you know, everyone was on top and it was just a fabulous time. Our greeters, our ushers, our, our guest relations and we would just want to say thank you so much for making Jesus famous in Riverside, amen. And I just tell you, it's just an amazing thing what God's doing here at the Rock Riverside. And we're just so blown away by His goodness. Amen? Amen. I want to let you know that we have a, such a wonderful thing happening here at the Rock. And uh, it just gets gooder and gooder. If I, make it, if I make you nervous, don't worry, it gets worse. Amen? We're just wanted to bless uh, God's people today and let you know that, you know, you're, you're at a good, healthy church. We're doing some things. It's not just coming to church on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights and getting filled and fed and with the Word and leaving happy and glad. And, you know, it's not, you know, we don't do church as usual here. Amen. We're blessed to know that people's lives are being changed and transformed and touched. I got an email today, uh, a text this morning from a wonderful young lady. I won't mention her name, but her initials are Donna DeYoung. <laughs> and they go out every Saturday and to the highways and the byways and they feed the homeless. They bring them food. They bring them clothing. Many of them make soup. They get things together and they go out. And uh, every single Saturday, they go out and be a light in someone's dark night. And as she gave me this report this morning, I was so blessed, and she's given me reports before, but this report in particular was so wonderful, I thought I would share it with you. She said, Pastor Tom, I want to let you know that we fed 60 people tonight with, the, with food. We blessed them. We helped them. She said, two of the gentlemen that we have been talking to have now signed up for college at RCC. Another individual has found his parents and got reunited with his parents and is now going to live with his parents and got a job and is living on their own and going to get a place for themselves. Someone else is going to donate a trailer for someone to live in and, and people are jumping on board to help them get things together for their life. And you know, a lot of these people, maybe they, some of them got up in drugs, maybe other people just were down and out. But you know, the fact of the matter is, is we're reaching out to them. One person told me one time, they said, you know, the, the poor, the Bible says, the poor you will have with you always. You can spend an entire lifetime trying to help the poor and you'll never reach and help every single one of them. And I thought to myself, you know, it's interesting that that person said that. It reminded me of a story. And there was this young girl and she was walking on the seashore and she saw thousands and thousands of starfish on the seashore. And so she, walking out there, she saw them, that they were on, on, out of the water and they were, they were obviously, you know, dying because they were not in the ocean water. So she began to walk and she began to pick up a starfish one by one and throw them into the water and pick up another and throw it into the water and pick up another and throw it into the water. And a gentleman walked up to her and he said, honey, you know, you're wasting your time. There's so many starfish. You're not going to be able to take care of all this. And she picked up a fish and she... And he goes, you're not going to be able to make a difference here. There's so many. And she picked up a starfish and she looked at that gentleman and she said, well, I know that, but I made a difference to this one. And she threw it into the ocean. Amen. Amen. 
We may not be able to help everybody. We may have a few children that our church actually uh, sends money to every year in Uganda, West and in South Africa. Kids that have parents that have been lost, uh, that have died due to AIDS in those countries. And we've adopted those children. And we send money to, their, to the, the, the team that's helping them get an education. We get pictures of the kids and we see them. And you know, it may only be a few. There may be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of children but it made a difference to that one. Amen? And I believe that that's what God's church is all about. Amen? To be able to take up donations of, of plastics and, and, and send it to an organization that's sending Bibles to the nation of China where Christians don't have a Bible like you and I have. One in a hundred have a Bible. And to be able to have a Bible written in their own language sent to them and to say we're going to touch the nations of the world that we can support ministries like Reinhard Bonnke, who's touching millions of people in the nations of Africa to support Bernie Moore, who came and has reached over 60,000 people, had 100,000 in his last crusade just a couple of weeks ago, who's right here, was on this platform ministering to us a wonderful word of the Lord, to be able to uh, sponsor Bible colleges in parts of New Guinea, where you and I cannot even walk into those parts of the world. We have eight Bible colleges in these nations that are disciples people in nations of the world that you and I will never be able to walk into. To know that you have a church that's not just doing church as usual, but is an impact in the world for Jesus. We may not have the funds to do is what big organizations and big ministries are doing, but we're doing our part. Amen. Because to that one, it matters. Amen. And so I want to let you know that we're a church and we are just excited for all that God's doing in individual lives of people. And so you're in a healthy place today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. God has a word for you today. Look at your neighbor and say, God has a word for you today. Is the slider all the way up on the lights? It seems kind of dull. Yeah? Okay, I'll add more lights later. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you know, I, no, we're not putting the spotlights on me. <laughs> that would be funny. Amen. Amen. But we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. Amen. Because why? God has a word for you. Amen. And, and if you came to hear from a man, you came for the wrong reason. We have some first time guests today. Amen. Let's say hello to them. Amen. If you're a first time guest, we'd like you to have you come to the front right now and tell everybody about yourself. No, we're not going to do that. Relax. We're not going to point you out in any way or form. We're just going to have a good time. I do like to have fun in church. God likes to have fun in church. Amen. To some, he's Jehovah Shama. To others, he's Jehovah Rapha. In my life, he is at times Jehovah Haha, the God of humor. <laughs> and that's not in any, any way or form, you know, putting, saying something negative. Because the, in the Jewish tradition, he says, I will be known by what I do. And God sometimes makes me laugh. <laughs> Amen. And so he is a wonderful God who laughs in the heavens and is rejoicing with all of us. Amen. You know, the Bible says that there's great joy in the presence of the angels when one sinner gets saved. Do you know that to the angels, salvation is a mystery to them according to the word of the Lord? So why would they be rejoicing? They don't even understand salvation. They can't figure it out. I believe the one that's really rejoicing is not the angels. Because the Bible says there's great joy in the presence of the angels. Who sits in the presence of the angels? The Lord God Almighty. I believe it's God going, woohoo! And the angels are going, he's excited, let's get excited, yay! Amen? Because they're responders, amen? Amen. Let's go before the Lord before I get myself in trouble. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name as we gather together in this word to hear the word of the Lord. That it's the word of, of the Lord that makes us free, the truth. And Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that your hand be upon this service. We lift up all the churches that are preaching the gospel. We thank you for our mother church, the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We thank you for the Rock Church in Temecula, Coachella Valley, and Coastal Hills. We lift up all the churches in the Inland Empire, Orange County, Riverside, all over the world. We thank you, Father, for next week as uh, you give me the opportunity to go to the Philippines to preach to eight to 10,000 people in the Cuneta Astrodome. And Lord, even last year we saw thousands get saved as we went into the dumps and we fed the children and took care of them and brought them clothes and met their needs, Father. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of that. 
as I leave tomorrow, Father. And Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you bless this service tonight, that we don't come to hear from a man, we come to hear from the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us, lead us, and guide us, direct us, and all that the Father would have us to know so that we could be what the Father's called us to be. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. Go ahead and open up your Bible to Genesis chapter 37. I have my Bible. For those that want to make sure I have my Bible, I have this little notepad thing that I'm getting used to using. I do have all the scripture written down here because of this new technology world. And sometimes I'll read from my Bible. Sometimes I'll just read the text out of the iPad so I'm not having to go back and forth. So I thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, we go through the book of Genesis on Sunday mornings. We've been going through the book of Genesis line upon line, precept upon precept. And we've been going through the book of Genesis for almost a year now. And we've been learning some great things. How many have learned some wonderful, powerful things in the Word of God? You'd be surprised what the Word of the Lord has for us when you study the Word that way. Today, if I've entitled this message, You Can't Keep a Righteous Man Down. You can't keep a righteous man down. Amen? So we're studying the life of Joseph right now. What's interesting about Joseph is in the entire gen book of Genesis, Joseph is the only person in the book of Genesis where 11 chapters are dedicated to one man. And the reason why it's dedicated to this one man is because the life of Joseph is a foreshadow of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. And we are going to see some things today that are going to just blow your mind. Your tongue is going to jump out of your mouth and smack you in the back of the head and smack your neighbor's head as well. Because you're going to, you're just going to, you're, you're going to say, wow. You're going to be so wow, you're going to want to say it backwards. Wow. Genesis 37, 18. Now when they saw him, this is the types and shadows of Jesus in the life of Joseph. This is like part four, I think. It says, now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near, they, can, they conspired against him to kill him. These are his brothers. Joseph is this kid that, that you know, we, we've already learned about, those that are new, that we've learned about Joseph, that, you know, he, he uh, was uh, one of the kid, one of the brothers of, the, of these, all, all these guys. And, and, and so what, what happened is uh, God, we, he, God began to give him some dreams. And, and, and this young kid, you know, he couldn't contain it. You know, I mean, God told him some stuff was going to happen. And this guy runs up to his brother and said, I had a dream. You know, it's like Martin Luther shows up, you know, I have a dream. And, and, but these guys didn't like him. And they said, you know what? It says they hated him even more. And the guy says, let me tell you my dream anyways. And I thought, what? Dude, you got to learn how to chill, man. They already hate you. Now you're going to tell them a dream where you are over them. You know, and they're not going to like you anymore. They already hate you. Now they're really going to hate you. And I thought to myself in regards to that, why would Joseph do that? And we studied about that. We talked about why would Joseph tell his brothers a dream knowing that they already hate him i'll tell you why because when god does something in your life you can't con explain it and you can't contain it amen, amen. amen. when it's real it's real amen it's kind of like salvation amen think about it for a moment you know you know, in, in this church, we do different things different times. Sometimes I'll have people raise their hands. Sometimes I'll have them just pray in their seats to receive Jesus. Sometimes I'll have them come to the front. Sometimes I'll just pray with them sitting down. I'll try different things. But why? Because, you know, when you're catching fish, you use different bait. Amen? It's whatever the Holy Spirit tells me to do, that's what I do. It. I don't do things religiously just because we do it that way. That's how we do it. That's how we always do it. No, no, no. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So Holy Spirit, show me what to do today. What, 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 who, what are the fish biting today? You know, when we're, when we're fishing for men. Amen? And so we do things different. But one of the things I've learned a long time ago, and this is why I don't get real big on making sure people raise their hand. I, I'm not, I don't make a big deal about it. I know some churches do. I went to churches that do that. It's okay if they do. There's nothing wrong with 
with that. You know, they'll have them come to the front and pray in the front in front of everybody. And they'll have real reasons for that. Well, you know, if you deny, you know, Jesus in front of man, he'll deny you in front of the Father. You know, it, it come out from among them. You know, they'll, uh, you know, take your first steps with Jesus, you know, in front of people. And, and it's kind of an outward expression of an inward confession. And, and I've done them all, amen. And I agree with every one of them. But the truth is, let's be real. Can we be real? Out of, you can go to a church and you can see a thousand people come to the altar. And out of those thousand, maybe, if you're lucky, a hundred will lock in. Hello? A hundred people get saved, but the retention of a hundred is maybe ten. I've been doing this for, for, for quite a some time. I've been doing ministry for over 25 years. I can tell you that's the honest truth. You can have 100 people get saved, but I tell you what, out of those 100, maybe 10, something happened, something transformed. So, because the truth is, if you had 100 people get saved and they all really got touched and they all came to church the next week, your church, you'd outgrow your church in a week. Amen? But it's not happening. Just as many come in the front door, go out the back door. Hello? Amen? But when a person, so, so like, I will say this, you know what? Sometimes I'll say, you know what? We're going to pray. Then after service, if you gave your life to Jesus, I'm going to have uh, uh, Pastor Jesse and Libby standing right here. Just get out of your seat and come talk to them. Because I know if you really got touched by Jesus, if something really happened, you could not, you couldn't stop the person from coming to the front if you tried. Because something happened. Amen. Amen. Maybe they don't come to the front, but all of a sudden there's a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. All of a sudden, they know they gave their life to Jesus. Maybe they're not as fanatical or crazy, but inside something starts boiling up. Y'all can witness it. Y'all, you know, when you gave your life to Jesus, it, something happened. You couldn't get enough. Too much was not enough. Hallelujah. I can't wait to go back to church next week. I'm born again. Hallelujah. I'm on fire for Jesus. You may have been jumping up and down on the inside because, you know, you're conservative on the outside, but you know on the inside you're going, hee, 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 hee. Something happened. Something transformed. You're a new creation. Amen. And you know, you know that you know that you know. You know people that are born again. You know people that are born again again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And it's okay. You know, when Heather first got saved, you know, last week, you know, uh, no, <laughs> just kidding. You know, she wasn't all running up to the altar, fired up like I was. I became a Pentecostal altar boy. I mean, I went to the altar for everything. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. And I needed a double dose of the Holy Ghost, you know. Heather was like, mm, I don't know. But I'll come to church. I'll serve the Lord. I'm going to raise my hand like everybody else. And guess what? I'm still going to drink. That's what she told the person. I'm so thankful that she didn't have a Barney Fife. A uh, 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 discipler. Ah, no, ah, you're supposed to be saved. Shundo, come out, devil. Ah, you know. Praise the Lord. She had someone that looked at her like Jesus did. Amen. I said, don't worry. There'll come a time you won't want to do that either anymore. She said, oh, not me. Not me. I'm not going to get, uh, I like doing that. Okay, that's fine. And the truth is, if you change because someone told you to change, you change for the wrong reason anyways. You got to change because Jesus told you to change. Because when Jesus tells you to change, he gives you the power to overcome those things in your life. Amen. You know, when a person gets saved, something transforms in their life. You know, I said one day I'm going to do a backwards altar call. I'm going to call everyone up that's saved and whoever's still sitting, we're going to pray for you. You know, when Jesus was uh, far off, they conspired to kill him as well. You're going to see some foreshadows of Jesus right now in the next 10 minutes. Genesis 37 verse 19. And they said to one another, his brothers, Look, this dreamer is coming. 
So they didn't like Joseph. They knew he had something. One thing you might not know is that Joseph actually had some authority over his brothers. And they didn't like that because he had a coat of many colors. Now, I know in our Sunday school classrooms, we were taught the coat of many colors, this rainbow coat. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be caught dead wearing a rainbow coat. <laughs> but see, it wasn't, it wasn't a colorful rainbow coat. A coat of many colors is not a coat with a lot of different colors. In the Hebrew days, a coat of many colors is a coat with long sleeves. This would be considered a coat of many colors because it's a coat with long sleeves. That's all that means. If you study in the Hebrew, it means a coat with long sleeves. And they would take documents and put them in their sleeves and they would tie them so that it's like their briefcase. So look, look, look at my briefcase. Look, I'm a, no, I'm not. But this is my coat of many colors. As a matter of fact, David's daughters wore coats of many colors. And it says that in the word of the Lord as well. So anyone of, 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 a, of a certain degree of responsibility or authority usually wore a coat of many colors and that was one of the reasons they didn't like him either that's why when they he the bible says that he went back to give a report of his brothers a bad report of his brothers to his father he wasn't a tattletale he was a person under authority and he saw that they were doing something they shouldn't be doing and he went and he told the boss he told the dad he says here and they said to him look this dreamer is coming. We know the dreams that he had. He said he's going to you know, rise above. He's going to do all these things. You know, The kid probably should have be, been quiet at certain times, but he couldn't help it. Man, it came out. It, when you know, you know it. it's happening, just like I talked about just a moment ago. But this word dreamer, everybody say dreamer. The word dreamer is so important. I love the word of God. Because the Word of God has such detail and some hidden gems that many times we don't even see it. It's sitting right in front of us. Look, this dreamer is coming. The word dreamer in the Hebrew is the word bahal, which means, look, the husband is coming isn't that interesting look the Lord is coming the master of the house is coming what a wonderful shadow of the Messiah the husband is coming amen this also tells us when I was telling you about a, he was a man of authority because he wore the coat of of long sleeves this answers that question for you they called him the master of the house the lord of the house the husband of the house the bible says in isaiah 54 5 for your maker is your husband the lord of hosts is his name and your redeemer is the holy one of israel he is called the god of the whole earth what a wonderful shadow of jesus how many know he's the husband of the bride of Christ? Amen? How many know that behold, the husband is going to be coming in the sky when the trumpet sounds? Amen? And he's coming back for his bride. Then it goes on to Genesis 37, 20. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And we know many times in the book of Psalms, it talks about, you know, the dogs surrounding me and they devoured me. And these beasts of the field that came against me. And it was talking about his crucifixion and what they did to him. Just a foreshadow. It's just for free. And then it goes on in Matthew 12, 14. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him that they might destroy him. A foreshadow of Jesus in the life of Joseph. Verse 37, I mean, verse 21, it says, But Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So he was ho hoping to go back and get him later. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic. Did they not strip Jesus of his robe? Amen. And they cast lots for it. 
They stripped Joseph of his tunic, and the tunic of many colors was upon him. Now, I love that because it talks about the many colors, the coat of authority, and they took the robe from Jesus. And that robe that Jesus wore was a, well, they, they actually, what they did when they, I'm not just talking about the robe, his white robe that had no seams, even though that was a very beautiful and expensive robe. But there, we know in the Bible that they put a robe of royalty on him, and then they tore it off of him. Joseph had the robe of authority and they, try, and they tore it off of him. Another foreshadow. Then they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. I didn't have a chance to look in the word there was no water in it, but I guarantee that they wrote that for a reason. That there's probably something in there. Maybe I'll find it for you next time I'm here. <laughs> Amen. And they sat down to eat a meal. And they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spices of balm and myrrh. Doesn't that sound familiar? I was interested to know that when Jesus was born, here's one for free. How many want a freebie, amen? Who want a freebie this morning? You want a freebie or not? All right, here's a freebie, okay? When Jesus was born, they wrapped him in swaddling cloth. Swaddling cloth in Hebrew or in Aramaic means burial cloth because what they used to do back in those days is when they traveled long distances they would take a, a, a burial cloth, a cloth and they would wrap it around their waist and they would put their clothes on over it so if they died in the middle of the desert the families could take their body pull the burial cloth off of them, wrap them in it, and carry them the rest of the way so they wouldn't be left out in the middle of the desert or carrying this dead corpse exposed. So when Jesus was born, Joseph took his burial cloth off and wrapped Jesus in burial clothes so he was born to die. Is that, is that, is that neat? That was for free. <laughs> Someone asked me, Pastor Tom, where do you get this stuff? Huh? I read. <laughs> I study everything. Amen. I look at every angle. I, I had uh, uh, Hugo. Hugo, you were with me when we were studying this. Was that fun? I was, oh, we were looking at every, oh, oh my God. I get all like a kid in a candy store. Amen. He just went, oh. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so Judah said to his brothers, what, what profit is it there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened and the Midianite traders, Midianite traders passed by. First it said Ishmaelites, now it's the Midianites. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver and they took Joseph to Egypt. 20 shekels. Everybody say shekels. Now, I know what many of us think when we hear that 20 shekels and we think, well, Jesus would betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Well, that's 30. How's 20? How's that connect? I'm glad you asked. Because <laughs> I've done my homework. You, can't, you didn't know you were coming to school today, huh? There is a difference between shekels and pieces of silver. In the Old Testament, 20 pieces of 20 shekels of silver a shekel of silver was worth about 88 cents in, in the New Testament a piece of silver was worth 55 cents so when you take the 20 pieces of silver and give or take some you know a couple hundred years here of inflation and things you take the 20 pieces of uh, 20 shekels and the 30 pieces of silver and you put them together and you'll come out with roughly the same amount of money isn't that interesting? It is believed by some, uh, including men like Josephus, who was a historian during those days, that according to Ezekiel, a slave would be sold for 30 pieces of silver, or 30 shekels if you may, but I believe it's piece pieces. But they, it is believed that when they sold Joseph, this is a different story, a whole different angle of it, uh, at it, that when they sold Joseph that the Ishmaelites asked, where did he come from? He doesn't look like a slave. And they conspired. And they said, listen, we'll give you 20. Just give us 20 
but don't say anything to anybody. Don't ask any questions and we'll sell them to you for 20. And that's another side note that some believe that they might have conspired with that whole thing. In, Je in Matthew chapter 27, verse 1, the Bible says that <clears throat> we know in Matthew 26, verse 14, that Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, according to Matthew 26, 14. But in Matthew 27, verse 1, it says, When the morning came, all the chief priests and the elders and the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. Plotted against Jesus to put him to death. We heard that about jo jo Joseph. And when they bound him, they led him away and deliver, delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought, him back, brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest, elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is this? What is that to us? You see to it. He said, you see to it. And he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and he departed and he went and he hanged himself. But the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, but that they are a, because they are the price of blood. And they consulted together and they, brought, and they bought with, them, uh, with it, with the money, the potter's field to bury strangers in it. They bought a potter's field. The potter's field is not just a place where they buried treasure, treasure, but in the beginning, back in the Jeremiah, it speaks of a potter's field where the potter, when he would make a mistake in his potter, he'd just throw it out the window. It'd just be a big ground full of broken pots. And aren't you glad that his blood was paid for a potter's field? Amen. That the price was paid for. Why? Because you and I are that pottery. We were broken. We were thrown out. We weren't accepted in the beloved. We weren't part of this whole thing and oh his blood redeemed us amen and brought us back in and made us acceptable to the father amen and it's so wonderful to know these things it's such a wonderful shadow in the life of Jesus the foreshadow the life and death of Jesus and this story of Joseph you can almost see a clear image of the betrayal and the death of Jesus come on somebody we're gonna go somewhere now are you ready it says you know one thing I found out is that you can't keep a righteous man down amen that no matter what here they are they're plotting against Jesus they're, I mean plotting against Joseph they're trying to do things just like they did to Jesus but I tell you what if you are a righteous man you cannot be held down Amen. You cannot hold a righteous man down. Amen. I, I remember when I was in children's church and I used to, I had this, the, I did this illustration and I took a balloon and I painted the face of Joseph on the balloon. I put Joseph and I put a righteous man and, and, and I dunked him in this big uh, aquarium full of water and you let him go and it pops up right up on top. And I took these little small balloons and I put trials, fire, tribulation, hardships, you know, sin, temptation, all these things. And I threw all these little balloons in the water. And then I took the big balloon with Joseph's face on it and I held it down and out popped the, the, the balloon above the rest. And I said, why? Because you can't keep a righteous man down. Amen. You can't keep a righteous man down. You know, the Lord's on your side. You know, Joseph was with Pharaoh. And I'm going to explain, say something to you that's going to be dynamic to your life. The whole time Joseph was in captivity and, and, and Pharaoh was over his life and he was a slave to Pharaoh. Not once, not twice, never will you hear Joseph open his mouth and complain to God about it. He never says a word to God. He never complains to Pharaoh. He never tears Pharaoh down. He never says anything to anybody because he know he knew that he knew. You don't even hear him crying out to God about it. He just knew that he knew that God had a plan. Amen. That no matter what was happening, he just knew, hey, God gave me a dream. God gave me a vision. God told me one day I'm going to be this and I'm going to hold on to that. So when the troubles come and the trials come, I'm not going to let go. See, when the Lord's on your side, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you can't keep a righteous man down. You know. You know. I, I'm fine. You may not always feel fine. You may not always, it may not always look like everything's fine, but it's all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. 
He said, I'll never leave you. In the Bible, it says that when we pray, that the Holy Spirit prays through us. And this one portion of scripture is, and, and I studied it from the Pentecostal angle because I grew up in a Pentecostal church. And, it, and they say, you know, the Holy Spirit prays through you with groanings that cannot be uttered. And we always learn that as, you know, the speaking in tongues, pray your private prayer language, things like that. But I found a whole different meaning of that as well that I can add to that. You know those times when things aren't going good and you're just, Ugh. Do you know God hears that? That's a prayer to the Lord. Groanings that cannot be uttered. Ugh. When things aren't always going well, I remember one time when my wife and I were, you know, I was going through some stuff and she came up to the, to the bed and she saw me laying there and I'm laying in bed. Being a big baby. She says, hey, what's going on? God has Let's pray. I don't want to pray. Don't look at me like that. You know you do the same thing, mijo. I just want mama to come. Bring me some chocolate chip cookies and a little bit of warm milk. Make me rub my belly. 35-year-old man. <laughs> How many have ever felt like that? So, you know, you're just groaning. You're just, man, I, I don't understand. I know God's on my side. I know God. I've read the scripture. I trust him. But blah. Why? Why? You know, Joseph never complained. See, in Isaiah it says, fear not. Fear not. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not. You know, fear, that word fear, don't let fear grip you and paralyze you. Fear not, for I am. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am. I love that word, I am. I am. Moses went to the burning bush and he said, Who shall I say sent me? God says, I am that I am. You know what I am means? In Hebrew, it's ahaya. It's the inhalation and exhalation of breath. It says, ah, don't worry. Just take a deep breath. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. Every time you take that deep breath, you're saying the name of God. Amen. That's why there's no sound in his name. It's breath. This is the air I breathe. Amen. He says, I am. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jesus is at his righteous right hand. I am. See, when we're in a troubled time, and we say, who's going to help me? God says, I am. When I've been diagnosed with sickness and the pain is coming and I can feel it and I'm trying to take this medication to, to, to cover up the pain, but I know it's still there. Who's going to be my healer? God says, I am. When I feel the pressures of life and I think, oh, I'm being tossed back and forth and the issues of life are hitting me. Who's going to keep me stable? God says, I am. Who's going to be my strong tower? God says, I am. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. I am your strong shield. I am your buckler. I am the great I am. I am the great I am. Amen. You know, there's going to be times where you're going to feel like God has been forsaken you. You're going to feel like that. And you know what? It's okay. Jesus felt that too. In Matthew 27, 45, it says about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He showed us his humanity. 
He took on the sins of the world and he felt what it's like for sin to separate us from the Father. And he says, oh Lord, I know what my people feel like. I know what they feel like sometimes. I know you're there, but oh God, why have you, I feel like you've forsaken me. I feel like you've forgotten me. I feel like you're not around me. I feel, I feel this emptiness on the inside. I know you're there. I know what the scripture says. You're my Father. You're my God. I've been with you. I am you. I know who you are. Are, but I, right now in the midst of this trial I say why are you but through the death and resurrection he made everything new again see don't let that devil lie to you anymore amen amen he's there you may go through the fire of the trial and you may feel the, the little bit of the trial and the fire in your life, but he's never left you. Amen. He didn't leave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. He didn't take them out of the fiery furnace, but he went through the fiery furnace with them. Amen. When Elisha was in the middle of the field in the valley, and Gehazi said, my master, my father, look the chariots. And God says, oh Lord, open his eyes and he may see. And he saw the chariots of fire and the angels of God all around. And oh, I tell you what, you may feel like it, my friend, but he'll never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says in the word of the Lord, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. I didn't say I was going to take you out of every one of them, but I said I will always be with you. Though I walk through the valley in the shadow of the death, in the valley in the shadow of death, walk through it, don't camp out. You walk through it. Fear no evil. Don't let the evil grip you. For you are with me. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Why? Because you can't keep a righteous man down. You can't keep a saved man down. You can't keep a righteous man down. You can't keep a child of God down. You can't keep a blood-washed, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost Christian down. We are victorious. You may not feel it. You may not always see it. You may feel a bit overwhelmed at times, but God is on your side. And oh, you may feel like you failed miserably, but you can't keep a righteous man down. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22, 16, the righteous man may fall seven times and seven times he gets back up. Because you can't keep a righteous man down. Amen. You don't let that devil lie to you. He comes and say, oh, he's forsaken you. No, he has not. He's right there. Joseph was in the middle of a trial. Joseph was sold as a slave. You never hear him complain. You never hear him say, speak negative towards Pharaoh. You never hear anything like that. He knew who he was in Christ, in God. He knew where he was. And sometimes there's going to be divine interruptions in your life. And it's not an attack of the enemy. Sometimes it's just a divine interruption for God to get you from where you are to where you need to be. Because listen, my friend, you've been praying for that job. And you're saying, Lord, how come I pray for a job? I've tithed, I believe, for increase in my finances. And I lose my job. And God says, because I have a better job. And you won't go fill out that application if I don't push you amen I've got to push sometimes sometimes I oh but I want it where I'm at aren't I supposed to just stay here you'll do it no 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 sometimes the doors of opportunity are labeled push the enemy raises up his ugly head can't keep a righteous man down now I want to give a disclosure if I may you know the little writing on the bottom of the commercial I always have to, whenever I talk about victorious living and God blessing you and God opening doors and the devil messing with you, I always want to give it a little disclosure. Now, we are many times a result of our daily routine. Okay? So, an example. If the devil, the, the pillow demon 
keeps you in bed in the morning and you're late for work all the time and you lose your job, don't go blame the devil. You should have turned off the TV and went to bed. Amen. If you're eating all the wrong foods and you're eat, living a sedimentary life and you start having some symptoms in your body, hello, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We got to take care of ourselves. Amen. If I eat a lot of fat, greasy food, I will become a fat, greasy dude. I know that. I've been there. I've done it. I had to lose 40 pounds one time. It wasn't a lot easier putting it on than taking it off. I tell you that. Amen. Because those those cocoa puffs at night look so good at 10 o'clock. Don't go buy the cocoa puffs. That's the answer. Amen. Because come on, listen, this is what God told me. He said, listen, if you, if you eat wrong foods and, and you live a certain lifestyle that's affected your health, what's the difference between that and tempting God? So you've thrown yourself off the cliff of fast food restaurants and said, Lord, catch me. Hello? We do have to be responsible in our homes. We make this responsible decisions. If you, if you go buy the big screen TV you can't afford, don't go blame the devil that, you're, that he's messing with your finances. Amen? Come on now. Hello? I like things too. These are disclosures. This is, I don't get people walking up and say, Oh, pastor, you said the Lord will bless me and look at all this. And it's like, well, I didn't tell you the disclosure. <laughs> there is a responsibility on your side. Amen. You do have to be a good steward with what God gives you. Amen. You do have to do what the Lord has you to do in those areas. You can't just do whatever you want and have God fix it. You know, and come on and then blame it on the devil. You can blame him anyways. He deserves it. You know. But we take responsibility. So what do we do in times like that? Lord, I need wisdom. He said, he who lacks wisdom, ask the Lord. Lord, I need wisdom in my finances. Lord, I need wisdom with my, with my health. I need wisdom to make right choices. You know, it's not easy to eat healthy. It's much easier just to go buy a, a hamburger. Amen? And, and cheaper. It's expensive to eat healthy. Amen? They, they say, oh, you got to eat healthy, you got to eat, oh, we made all this organic stuff for you, it's all unhealthy. Yeah, but it's twice money, and then you tax us. <laughs> that was for free. And we have no money to buy that stuff. <laughs> Amen. But praise the Lord, we ask God for wisdom. Amen. You can't keep a righteous man down. So when the enemy raises up his ugly head, you say, Lord, I have wisdom, I have understanding. Give me direction in this. And when it is the devil, I bind you, devil. I'm not going to allow you to mess with my life. I'm going to stand my ground. I'm a righteous man before the Lord. Amen? When we know what's the difference between ourselves and the enemy is when the things that you have no control over, and it happens, and you know that's the enemy, man. That's the enemy. Amen? Amen. If you got something for Jesus today, let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello friend, this is Pastor Tom Flores from the Rock Church Riverside and we never like to end a service without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So today, if you would like to become born again, receiving Jesus as your Savior, have your sins forgiven and make heaven your home, and you've never done that before, or maybe you, at one time you've done that, but you would like to rededicate your life today, I want to give you that opportunity. Would you pray this prayer with me in inviting Jesus into your heart and accepting Him as your Lord and Savior? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and say this with me. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead to give me a new life. And I accept you now as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, we want to welcome you to the family of God. And I want to encourage you right now as you are sitting there to begin to start looking for a home church to get plugged into so that you can grow and be all that God calls you to be. Now, we would like to invite you to the Rock Church Riverside if you are in the area. We are located at 4027 Trail Creek Road, Riverside, California, 92505. We would love to meet you and encourage you in the things of God so that you can grow and be all that God has called you to be. Thank you again and God bless you.
Thank you for joining us here at The Rock Church. We would like to extend an invitation for you to come visit one of our live services here at our location. We are located at 4027 Trail Creek Road, Riverside, California, 92505. For more information regarding our service time as well as how you can support The Rock Church Riverside, please visit our website at www.rockchurchsr.com. God bless you, and remember, with God, all things are possible.